Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today, what is a linear map? Or in other words, linear algebra done right. So a lot of people would say, what I'm going to show you today is kind of the essence of doing linear algebra in a, a kind of correct way. Um, I might disagree at least a little bit. I will, I will come back to this later, but basically the idea is as follows. So everything you usually learn in the classical, well, lecture or whatever book on linear algebra would be kind of based on some coordinate system. So here you have four pictures of coordinate systems. You always have a, um, a black axis, uh, a greenish axis, and a blue one. And so this first picture here, this is just a, the kind of the standard coordinate systems. Uh, it's just a standard coordinate system. But nobody really tells you why this should be a good choice or we are just very biased. We are, that's what we learned from, from, from childhood, like uh, Descartes, the the Cartesian co co coordinates. And, but there's no really good reason why this should be true or, well, not why this should be true, but why this should be a preferred choice. You could take basically anything you want, as long as it kind of spends some three-dimensional space in this case. So you can take the slightly scaled uh, standard coordinate system. So this would be the x-axis, which I might want to put in black. So the x-axis, and there's a y-axis, and then there's a z-axis. Nah, probably the other way around. There's a um, y-axis, and there's a z-axis in the standard Cartesian coordinates. And this is kind of the same, but slightly scaled. This is a bit fancier. The axis are kind of going all over the way, but why not? I mean, why is this worse than any of the other two? Um, and here's another one, it's completely flipped. It's going in, in a completely different direction. Whatever it is, as long as it reasonably spends some three-dimensional space, it shouldn't matter at all, right? I mean, as I said, all our brains are very biased. So we kind of like this uh, rectangular shape thing, like this, this, this standard Cartesian coordinates, X, Y, Z, but there's no really real reason to do that. And actually in some applications, you might want to look at different coordinate systems. For example, um, a lot of matrices up to base change um, if you, if you change the coordinate system, they actually look nicer. This is a classical example of why you should, well, in, in, why in some circumstances you might want to, to see different, you might want to use different coordinate systems. And that's kind of the essence of this slogan, linear algebra done right, right? So linear algebra done right should be linear algebra without worrying about coordinate systems. Because really the slogan is non, really not a single coordinate system can, can be really preferred over any of the others. For some application, you will always find, or for any coordinate system, let me say it the other way around, for any coordinate system, you will always find some application where it is preferable over some other coordinate system. So linear algebra done right would be linear algebra kind of coordinate free. And the main essence of linear algebra done right would be the, the notion of a linear map in contrast to the notion of a, of a matrix. So let me try to explain this um, in, 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 a, in an analogy. So almost everything you will ever see in real life, <laughs> in mathematics, in whatever, might come in two incarnations. There will be an abstract incarnation and um, there will be some real life incarnation, which I just call it the incarnation here. Um, so abstractly, for example, uh, there is an abstract constant of the number three, right? So all of you know that kind of there's an abstract constant of the number three. We give it the symbol, uh, this one here, um, but the symbol doesn't really matter. It's, it's kind of really an abstract concept. It doesn't really exist in life. But rather in, in, in real life, in its incarnation, it might take the form of three apples or three triangles or three, whatever you want, right? You get the point. The number three as an abstract incarnation, like an abstract definition, 
whatever. And but it also have, has a real life incarnation. And the real life incarnation kind of depends a little bit on the circumstances. It depends a bit on whether um, you see three apples, you see three triangles, you see three videos or whatever, right? Um, note the following here. So this thing is, is kind of, so this part is, is kind of the more natural way of thinking about numbers. So animals can think about three apples. Not, or at least we know that they can recognize three apples. Some animals can. Um, we are not so really sure about whether animals can recognize the abstract concept of the number three. Um, maybe they can, maybe they can't. But also for you, probably you, you knew what three apples are before you knew what the abstract concept of the number three was. And the same works for linear maps. So linear maps have an abstract definition, um, which I certainly should put in, in this color, um, as some linear map of some space. Uh, just as a, as a map with some certain properties, which I'm going to explain, and then you call it the linear map. And kind of the real life incarnation that you will see are whatever, for example, a matrix. It could be a matrix, and the matrix is just a linear map with a choice of coordinate system. It, a linear map could also appear as an action on a space, like, like this picture. Like in this case, this is kind of a rotation and you can see it in this picture, some kind of everything rotates around, uh, around the, the orange. It could uh, appear in a completely different circumstances, but it's all the inca different incarnation of the same thing. In a, in a uh, really kind of strict analogy to the case of, of the number three and its incarnation via, via, via three apples, via three triangles. So the slogan is really linear maps are matrices without choosing coordinates. Um, right, linear algebra done right. We don't have a preferred, there is no preferred incarnation of the number three, there is no preferred incarnation of a, of a, of a linear map. Um, let's try to now try to find actually what, what the linear map should be. In some sense, the linear map should be just, okay, it's a map between vector spaces. In my example, it's a map from R2 to R2, say. Um, uh, and it, it's the one from before, this rotation-like thing. So F, X, Y is just Y minus X. And um, it, it kind of should be a, a map of vector spaces. So you have two properties of vector spaces. Then you have a scalar multiplication in vector spaces and you have an addition in vector spaces. Um, and kind of you want to both to be preserved. And if you check this in this example, you realize, oh yeah, this, um, this F actually preserves addition, which just means if you add two vectors, then it's the same as adding uh, the results on the other side. And you can also check in this example that F preserves scalar multiplication, which is just, if, if you multiply a vector by a scalar, then it's the same as multiplying the result by, by the same scale. And you can see this in pictures. Okay, that's, um, that's a very natural and geometric idea. Uh, I illustrated here the, the one with, with, with the scalars, so you preserve scalar multiplication. And it works like this. So you start with, um, maybe you should choose a different color. So you start with kind of a certain object and the, the, uh, a linear map acts on this object by sending it to a different object, because in this case, I'm going from R2 to R2. So all of these coordinates here are, of course, R2. And you could use F, which is its rotation, and you rotate this thing a little bit, and you get to this picture. Or you can scale it. And let's say you scale it by something like one, one over two, so it gets a little bit smaller. And then you can scale this picture, and it gets a bit smaller, and you can rotate it again, and you end up at, at, with, with, the same, with the same geometric object. So that's really just just a, a different, a geometric way of saying why you want such a map to be, uh, so why you want to have this property that a map preserves scalar multiplication. And the other one is, you can illustrate it in, in a very similar fashion. So, so both of these are very, very natural assumptions on the map you can make if you're interested in kind of properties, like, like linear properties of vector space. 
And that's exactly the formal definition. A linear map between vector space is, is exactly what you think it should be. It preserves addition and it preserves scalar multiplication. And this is exactly, in other words, this is kind of the, the most important part here. Uh, linear maps are built to preserve the structure you already have in a vector space. In a vector space, you can add vectors and you can multiply vectors by a scalar. And that's exactly preserved by a linear map, right? You can, you, you can uh, if you add vectors, then you add the, the results of the linear map. If you scale vectors, then you scale the result of the linear and the way to go to a basis is now add, uh, to, to, to a matrix is now to choose a coordinate system. So for a linear map, you could choose a coordinate system. Let me use this example from before. This was this rotation thing. So the rotation thing is, so this is my X axis, this is my Y axis. And my rotation was something like a 90 degree rotation. So it would sense the X vector, which is in this notation one zero and the Y vector zero one. It would send this one to to the y vectors so to, the, to, to zero one, and we will send this one to the to the negative of the x vectors so to minus one zero. And you write this into a matrix in this coordinate system, then you just do it this way. So you write the image of the first basis vector in the first column, you write the image of the second basis vector in the second column, and that, that would be your matrix associated to, to, the, to the linear map. I say it again, this depends on the choice of a coordinate system. And that's why you sometimes don't want to do this because this is not really what mathematicians would say canonical. Uh, and you rather want to think of a linear map as something, something abstract, like the number three is something abstract. It's good to have in mind that there are three apples. It's good to have in mind that the, uh, that the linear map has an uh, incarnation as matrices. And sometimes that's exactly what you want to do. And you don't want to use abstract uh, definition. Sometimes you want to use abstract definition. It, it kind of depends. Just keep this analogy in mind. And the whole slogan of, let me wrap up, the whole slogan now of, of linear algebra done right is exactly what you think it is. So kind of everything you can say about matrices should have a formulation which is basis free. Um, on this slide, I just presented you, for example, how you could uh, formalized diagonalizability of a linear map in, in a basis free notation. Um, you could pause the video and read it. It's not super important. It's just you can do it without talking about really diagonal entries of a matrix. So it roughly works like this. You, you, you kind of choose your eigenvalues and you, you, you kind of choose where, where, they, where they sit. And then you can have an abstract definition of, of a matrix of being diagonalizable because, well, a linear map a priori doesn't talk about a matrix, but a matrix can be diagonalizable. And if there's a correspondence and there is a correspondence between the abstract and the real life incarnation, then everything uh, that exists in real life should also have an abstract incarnation. And basically linear algebra done right, the slogan linear algebra done right means you can phrase everything you would like to say about matrices in basis free set. Uh, that's just what you should keep in mind whenever you see a lecture on, on linear algebra or read a book. There are always two flavors. You could do it abstractly, like without referring to a basis, or you could do it concretely. And it's really important to keep both in mind because you won't really want to place them against each other. They're, they're really helpful. Sometimes the abstract viewpoint is really helpful. Sometimes the explicit viewpoint is really in any case, I started waffling. So thank you very much for listening and see you next time.